We're asked to design a four bar mechanism to give the two positions shown below of coupler motion. So this is coupler motion. So this is the coupler link that we're seeing here. This is the coupler at position one or time one and the coupler at um, time two. So um, we're told here to follow steps from a particular example in your textbook and we're told not to use the rotopole. At the end we need to add a driver dyad that's explained in um, example 3-4 in the textbook also and then verify that the four bar chain which includes this driver dyad we added is Grashoff. We're not going to be building the cardboard model in this um, solution. So the first thing we need to do is connect uh, the points that are the same but at different times um, and that would be point A um, at time 1 and time 2 and point B at time 1 and time 2. We need to perpendicularly bisect these lines and so we'll find about the midpoint of both of them and use a perpendicular bisector so um, we're not using a rotopole so even though we are perpendicularly bisecting each of these lines each of these line segments the intersection of them which would be the rotopole is not going to be used and so while these do intersect here we're not going to use that intersection for anything in particular now um, ground link O2 is going to be somewhere on this line and ground link O I'm sorry ground position O2 is going to be somewhere on this line and ground position O4 is going to be somewhere on this line so I'm just going to pick a convenient spot um, doesn't really matter where it is on this line um, go ahead and pick this location and call that O2 and I'm going to pick a position up here um, maybe way up here let's say doesn't really matter just needs to be on this line and call that position O4 O2 connects to A1 I'm going to connect that one here and O4 connects to B1 we could draw that one here okay. and so what's going to happen is that um, it'll be much easier to see these now that they're drawn in because we've got these other lines used here for construction I'm going to go ahead and color them in so we can actually see them better here so I'm going to use this green marker and so this is going to be one of my rockers here from O2 to A1 and I'm going to make little circles here to represent joints and then from A1 to B1 is my coupler draw it in joint here my B joint and then finally my rocker my last rocker um, from O4 to B1 draw that in so now it's a little easier to see my mechanism and also to see the kind of motion that's going to occur so as O2 moves in this direction we'd expect A1 to follow this path end up over here at A2 and B1 to kind of follow this path and end up at B2 so let me just kind of draw where A1 is headed it's going to end up over here and so that's going to happen and, but what we want to do is we want to, we want to kind of bound the motion so we don't want um, this link to go further in that direction or to go further past the second position we want the coupler to come to here stop and go back the way we do that is to add a driver dyad we already have four links we have our ground link from O2 to O4 we have a rocker from O2 to A1 a coupler from A1 to B1 and a rocker from B1 to O4 but we're going to go ahead and add in a driver dyad and it's up to us kind of where we place it I'm going to put it up here I got a lot of free room over here so um, the first thing I need to do um, this is now we're starting this the second step is I need to find out the extension of that rocker so it goes from B1 all the way to B2 so I'm going to draw over here to B2 draw a line here and then I just need to pick a convenient place and I think we can use a compass to do that and so I'm going to kind of just come down and draw an arc here 
that passes both passes through both of these lines. Make sure we did a good. That's great. And then I'm gonna kind of label these two points. I got some A's and B's floating around, so I think I'm gonna call this one D. So this is a D1 and a D2. And <clears throat> gonna draw a line through those two points and stop at a convenient location. I consider this point here to be pretty convenient. And there's really no other reason just where I chose to stop. That's going to be a new ground location for my crank. And we've already used O2. We've already used kind of the O2, O4. So I'm going to call this one O6. Now the crank is going to be here. But how long is the crank going to be? It's going to be half of the distance from D1 to D2. That's about two and a half. So um, we need a crank that's about one and a quarter. And so I'm going to come over here. That's about one and a quarter, as you can see here. So about one and a quarter. Come down. That would be my crank position. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in that crank here um, for that driver dad. So here we are. And the rest of it is the new coupler of that dyad that comes on down and hits D1. And connects there. And so this is kind of a new four bar chain because we added this driver dyad which is composed of a crank and a coupler. And um, that guy's going to come back uh, on the opposite side. Go ahead and draw that in. I think we said 1.25 thereabouts for the crank length. And so we label this E1 and this E2. What we'll see is that as we move the crank in this direction until it comes over and lands on E2, we're going to be pulling this whole linkage back. So the coupler is going to come over to this position. And then as we go from E2 back to E1, then it's going to push from this second position back to our first position. Um, now, before we show that um, in simulation, we need to determine whether or not it's grash off. Um, and we're just going to focus on the second part of this, the, uh, uh, the four bar created by this driver dyad, where this is my crank length, this is my coupler, this is my rocker, and then I have my ground link here. Go, on, go ahead and give these the standard labels of. L2, L3, L4, and L1. So it looks like my crank is indeed the shortest here. I'm looking for S plus L to be less than P plus Q. The S, the shortest, looks like it's going to be my, my um, crank. And I think we said that was 1.25 centimeters. Um, our longest is either the coupler, which looks like it's 6.5. 6.7, 6.8, or the ground, which is looks like 7 point something. So the ground is longer. The ground is 7.3. So that's going to be L1, 7.3 centimeters. And the others are that coupler, which is 6.7. Whoops. 6.7 meters and finally the last one would be my rocker here which is real close to 3 so L4 is equal to 3.0 centimeters and so these two here we're looking at 8.55 and here we're looking at um, 9.7 so we're indeed grash off for the second little piece or the second uh, four bar of the six bar chain because we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, and then any of the grounds would be six. So we have a six bar chain, but um, the interesting thing about this mechanism is that it's bounded to move between the two positions shown by a single motor that just has continuous rotation. There's no need to stop this motor and go in the reverse direction. By turning continuously, we go backwards and forwards. I'm going to kind of demonstrate that using the Force Effect Motion app. It's available for Apple devices and for Android devices. Um, you can even run it on a desktop on the Chrome browser. 
And here we see kind of the same um, uh, problem. I've taken a picture of it, brought it into the application, and here we have our crank, and as it moves, it's going to pull that coupler over and then push it back. And so we can see the coupler comes over, lines up on A2, B2, and now it's pushing it back to its start position. And it's bounded, goes back and forth, so that driver dyad is a great location for adding um, a motor. Thank you for watching.